Kamusta. And welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about functions and procedures and purity and side effects. And we'll start today in JavaScript, but let's look at the example program first, which is the number guessing game, or human in the loop binary search. The game plays like so. Guess a number between 1 and 100. 50, too high. 30, 20. Say I mistyped something though. I didn't understand. Okay, that's nice of it to tell me. 25, 28, 27 is the answer. Finished in six guesses, total input errors, one, right there. So that's how the example program works for today. And it represents more sophisticated, larger programs that involve user input, interaction with external systems, and computation. And the implementation starts out by picking a number between one and the high value, sets up the game, plays through it, and reports results, where the total input errors is considered to be debug information and not core to the logic of the game itself, just useful for developers perhaps. Because of this, I've made error count a global variable. So to play the game, we loop until the game is done, we ask the user for their guess, report information to the user, and update the game state. We report whether their guess is too low, too high, or the answer, and then an update, if it is the answer, we set done to true, and we increment the number of guesses. Asking for the guess is also a loop, in case there were any errors, where we do validate the number format. So that's the gist for how the program works. And since this is plain JavaScript, I don't have any static type information sitting around, which means unless I have a really helpful tool, I can't see the types of my variables. I don't get nice autocomplete, and the computer won't type check anything for me. I'll have to rely on documentation, talking to people, or reading through code, including possible unit tests, which I don't have here, by the way. On the other hand, if we move to TypeScript, suddenly I can specify types on things, so I know that game is a game and guess is an int. Autocomplete also works, and if I forget to include something, I get a report from the computer that I forgot that. Property high is missing. And different people have different opinions, but in my experience, I find that having static types helps me to understand what I'm doing better, especially in large programs, which most programs eventually become. Now, while TypeScript has given me a certain amount of static typing, there are a lot of other issues that remain implicit in my program here. I really have no idea what play might do beyond looking at documentation, talking to people, or reading the code. For example, some of my functions might throw exceptions, but that's not obvious to me without digging through things. However, if we go to Java, certain exceptions need to be declared. And there's a history of the good and bad this might give you, but it does make certain things more explicit. I've also chosen to use an explicit pseudorandom number generator rather than just rely on the global random built into JS. But let's get back to exceptions. Here, gameplay might throw an IO exception. So if I don't declare it on this method, then I get a compiler error. And I've been more explicit about my possible exceptions and errors in Java than I was in JavaScript as well. For example, I'm only catching number format exception in ask guess multi, whereas ask guess might throw IO error, IO exception, or number format exception. But of these three, only IO exception is required to be declared. IO error is an error, and number format exception is a runtime exception, meaning I don't have to declare it. So if I got rid of these, my program still compiles. And the idea is that those are ones you're less likely to want to handle. True or false, I don't know. But they could be thrown. Readline throws IO error, which it only mentions in the documentation. Parsent throws number format exception, which it does put on the method signature. So exceptions are one thing beyond just return values and function calls as expressions that might happen. They're kind of effect. It's not just about receiving and returning a value. Meanwhile, lots of other side effects are happening in this program as well still that are not explicit at all. And in fact, Java is the only language for today where I used instance methods of a class because that was just much more straightforward to do in Java versus passing data around between functions. Let's take a look at Zig to see what else we can see. Like in Java, I create my own pseudorandom number generator only I've explicitly seeded it off the system clock, which makes one thing slightly more explicit, at least if I read through the code. I also see explicit handling of possible errors, though I haven't said here which kind. I've let it be implied. Worth noting, though, that in zig, try means 
If I got an error, return the error. Otherwise, just treat the return value as it is, which in this case are all void. Though they don't have to be. Here I've read a line from input or returned a possible error, which I can be explicit about if I want to, and even handle them using switch expressions rather than using the try keyword. But there's more to see in Zig than that. For example, we see var versus const keywords. There is a final keyword in Java, which means you can't reassign the variable, but const in Zig is somewhat deeper than that. And through most of the languages today, I'm going to use value data types. And when a variable is of type const, it means the values inside of it also can't be changed. But this doesn't carry across internal non-const pointers, which is common across many of the languages we look at today, though I won't focus on it here. Because again, I'm focusing on values to keep things simple. However, I will pass a reference or pointer to my struct value so that the game itself can be modified. And I had to be explicit about it here rather than just magically happening behind the scenes. And another thing that's explicit in Zig today that won't be in any of the other languages is memory allocation. I can arbitrarily use global allocator somewhere, such as malloc or free in C, but common convention is to pass allocators explicitly so you can see where memory allocation might occur. In a sense, it's considered an effect in Zig that's tracked. And because I'm passing around a pointer or reference to my game, it means I can modify it, such as down here in update. Though I could make a version of update instead that actually is a function in the mathematical sense that just receives and returns values. But in any case, it's still clear when I want to be able to modify it. And I've chosen to pass the game as a value into report. And this somewhat value passing in Zig is not the same as you might expect in C++, which we'll see in a minute. It may or may not choose to pass this in as a const reference. So values passed in are inherently const in Zig. If I try to modify my game in my report function, where I haven't received a pointer, then I get a compiler error saying I cannot assign to constant. So let's take a look at C++. Here I've chosen to receive game as a reference, which in C++ can be implicit in how you pass it versus if I used pointers. C++ also has exceptions where I want to use them. I've claimed that AskGuessMulti doesn't throw exceptions because I'm sloppily catching too many kinds of exceptions here. But I've chosen to make my update function a pure function, including one that also can't throw exceptions. And I've put a wide variety of modifiers on here to control how I use it. Now discard means that I have to use a return value. Constexper means I can use this to make calculations at compile time. It is actually my strongest control for functional purity of the things I have here. And speaking of which, if something really is a function without side effects, there's no point in using it without the return value. or at least I'll get a warning about it. And I can change warnings to errors as I see fit in my compiler usage. Note that Zig does this by default. If I did the functional version of update to get a new game state, and forget to use the return value, I get expression value is ignored here. So Zig by default acts like no discard in C++. But what's this thing here? Let's take a look at the GCC manual on this. It says the const attribute allows GCC to avoid emitting some calls in repeated invocations of the function with the same argument values. In other words, I'm claiming to GCC that it's a pure function, whether or not it actually is. So for kicks, let's see what happens. If I reference global variables, such as the error count for the mistyped user input, what happens if I reference that global variable inside of update, or throw exceptions, or such like, while still claiming that it's a function that can be computed at compile time? We get errors. I can't use that global variable in a constant expression. And I furthermore get warnings from my no accept and again from my lack of use of the return value. So let's get rid of const expr and no accept and no discard and see what happens. No complaints at all. This attribute const can be used by the compiler to optimize my usage of update even if I don't conform to the rules. Undefined behavior coming your way. Let's take a look at Rust. 
Rust, like Zig, has no exceptions. Instead, returning things that either have an OK result or some kind of error. And this question mark is the equivalent of try in Zig, where it returns the error if one is found, or uses the value if not. And also like Zig, I can take care of my errors manually if I want to. But unlike Zig, it's shorter to make your data constant. You have to give an extra mute to make it mutable. Also, if I want to use global variables inside of my functions, I have to declare my usage of them to be unsafe. Or say it otherwise, what's in here that might be unsafe, I'm claiming actually is safe for the surrounding circumstances, whether true or false. But referencing that global outside of an unsafe block will give a compiler error. And a const function in Rust is like constexpr in C++. So I'm claiming this function can be computed at compile time. And even with unsafe, I can't reference my global variable. But before we leave Rust, I want to take a look at one more thing here. Game was a constant already, but I can make a new variable in the same scope with the same name. This new variable now replaces the previous variable with the same name for the remainder of this block. And I want to look at some name games in a few other languages, thinking about syntax versus semantics a little. But in any case, we've seen already how in Zig, C++, and Rust, we have a bit more control over when our parameters might be modified and or when exceptions or errors might happen and or how and when we can use global variables or even, in the case of Zig, how we allocate memory. But again, let's do the name game for a second. C Sharp has output and reference parameters such that even when I have a value type like game or int, my values can be modified by the functions being called like we saw in Zig, C++, and Rust. However, does this make the function impure? To my understanding, there's not a huge difference between out answer and answer equals. It's just different syntax for the same thing. And note that I didn't have to initialize my variable value before passing it in to an out parameter. And noting here this ref keyword, in Swift we see something a little bit different. We use an ampersand to pass in something that can be changed, but the function parameter itself uses keyword in out in the place of where ref is used in C sharp. So, is play in out game in Swift equivalent to let game equals play game in Rust? Well, conversion to static single assignment form can vary in complexity depending on the surrounding control flow. But at least for these value types, it is relatively straightforward to change a mutating function into one that returns a new value, swallowing up the side effect. Also in terms of how we manage variables and return values, I want to take a look at Odin with a brief detour on the topic of const parameters because, like Zig, Odin parameters that seem to be passed by value are actually const and could be references. So here, instead of my report function, if I modify a variable, I get an error that I can't assign to game.done. And furthermore, I can't even take the address to get around it. Can't do the pointer address of a procedure parameter. Parameters have special rules around them. Although, if we explicitly pass in the address, we can modify the data. But back to the topic of parameters versus return values. Odin, like Go, has named return values, which sometimes can be very handy. But now I want to look at MATLAB or Octave, which does something else interesting with this. Because in MATLAB, your output variable can have the same name as your input variable, meaning it looks like I'm mutating the data. Same thing down here in update. But it's not true. This actually is a pure function because assignment and parameter passing in MATLAB by default passes by value. So semantically, when I'm saying game.done equals true or game.guesses plus equals one, I'm actually creating a new game variable with a new value inside of it. And this return value will also be a copy. Although for efficiency, MATLAB can do copy on write. But just to prove the point here, what happens if I don't assign the return value of update? But first let's prove it actually works. Guess a number between 1 and 100. 50, too high. 30, too high. 20, too high. 10, 5, 3, 2, is the answer. Seven guesses. I almost thought I was going to land on one. That would have been fun. But just to prove it's actually handled things correctly. What happens if up here I don't assign the result and play the game again? Well, that was interesting. Not sure we got number two twice in a row, but in any case, it claims we have zero guesses because even though the game finished, 
I didn't assign the result back to the game variable, which means I didn't have the output. That really was a copy, even though it looked like a mutation. But now that we've had fun in a variety of languages that don't claim functional purity, let's take a look at some languages that are more focused on functional programming, starting with Haskell. Haskell functions by default are pure, and commonly we use the IO monad to do IO, such as reading and writing from the console, or even random number generation, in order to have our impure effects take place. And so my update function by default is going to be pure. I don't have any IO sitting around here. But for fun, to track my total number of user input errors, I've used a state monad instead of IO to get the job done. But it means I have to layer two monads together. Where I play the game, I have both a debug state and IO going on. And I use monad transformers to layer them. And this got especially tricky for me for trying to catch exceptions using the IO monad while doing updates to my debug information with the state monad. I'm sufficiently inexperienced in Haskell that I'm not sure I could ever have gotten this done on my own. Happily, there are others out there helping me out. So while Haskell gets the job done for IO, random numbers, tracking external state, and so on, I found it to be a very steep learning curve. And this compares with Coca, which is a language I'd never used until working on this video, but I found very straightforward to figure out in most cases. Coca is a research language, which means it might not be good for everyday use, but I still found it to be a very nice and pretty language. And I thought it made effect tracking very simple. So for example, my main function does console IO, can throw exceptions, can calculate random values, and technically might not ever terminate. It might diverge because it's true that play could be an infinite loop. So really I'm being more explicit here than in Haskell. And also worth pointing out that functional purity does not require that no mutation happens inside of a function. So for example here, I can declare a variable done, and if I got the answer right, I can reassign that variable. In the external world, update is still a pure function. This applies in other languages as well. And the default, when I don't give any effects in Coca, is saying that it's total, which means there are no effects, it's a pure function, and it doesn't diverge. And overall, I suspect that the more you can live in this world in a large-scale application, the easier a program will be to understand. No monkey business is going on behind the scenes in a total function. If your computer doesn't blow up, that function finishes, and all it does is calculate a result based on the parameters. Minus the explicit memory allocation of Zig or other secret things maybe I'm not thinking about. But I also want to focus in Coca on how I'm tracking my error count. Because I don't explicitly have global variables, but I can make my own kinds of effects. And in this case, I've made an effect called debug. And any function, which still claims to be a function, can have an explicit debug effect that has an impact on the supposed return value. So here I'm saying, anytime someone with a debug effect calls ink error, I want to increment my error count, which we see over here in the ask guess multi function. It takes a debug effect handler and can make use of it, whatever that's doing elsewhere. And I know what it's doing because I'm the one that called it. And only certain effects are allowed to be unhandled in main. So for example, if I don't handle the ink error, then I get a compiler error about it. But if I do, then I'm good to go. But before we're done for today, I want to take a look at NIM. Because NIM is a language that is being used in production, and it provides some of the same features that Coca has because you can explicitly tag each function with the effects that might happen. And if I claim that my play procedure doesn't have a read IO effect, then the compiler complains at me for it. And you can use data type names as your own tag names for whatever kind of effects you want to track. And interestingly, NIM also has func and proc declarations to explain by default when you want to say that your function is pure versus when it's a procedure. And the effect tracking in NIM is why I used it for a recent fun experiment for the Wasm 4 Fantasy Console. I don't really have much of a full game, but I do have procedurally generated trees and parallax scrolling. And Wasm 4 makes quite a bit of use of global variables and memory state to manage the Fantasy Console. But by using them, I could invent effect tags to keep track of when globals are being written to and or read from. And I did feel like this was helping me have better thoughts and control over what my functions were doing in my little program here. Anyway, so that's our magical mystery tour, going from no type annotations to static typing and through many other things to see what else we can make explicit in our program, rather than just having to guess what might happen. I hope this has been fun, and maybe we can look more at effect handling in the future. 
Also, here's a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon, something I started up just with this new year. I'm really grateful for those who want to support the channel in this way. You also still can contribute on individual videos on YouTube, or if you just want to enjoy the videos as they are, that's fine too. Just saying thanks to those who are helping out. And if you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Palam. I guess he just got two twice by chance.